Yeah, I started with Nixon, yeah, a couple of years back. I got sick of LSP before I think the tidal wave of a, everyone uh, started jumping the sinking ship there. Um, so, yeah, I'll just quickly run over this. Um, so, yeah, we know what it is. It's lots of releases. Yeah, we know how DMX works. Um, so, yeah, load up Nixon and you get a screen like that. Uh, basically, you can open sequence on the left-hand side, and then you've got your display set up, uh, which is your channel definitions and your display preview. Very similar concepts to X lights, um, just laid out a little bit differently. So before we start doing any um, or even X lights config, you want to make sure that your native controllers are working first, because if you haven't got your IP networking going, it's going to be a lost cause, and you'll have no hair left. Um, I also keep a spreadsheet of where everything lines up to. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'd have no clue about how any of this is <coughs> working. You've got to remember too, while well, it's um, you remember in December, when it comes to November of the following year, it uh, all the connectors will look the same. Uh, so yeah, the channel setup window before on the it's basically a mapping, so you've got like logical uh, channels or controllers and gr or grouping, and then that maps, so that's on the left-hand side, and then that maps across to the right-hand side where you've actually got your um, controller definitions. So it's basically a binding. So yeah, that's what I touched on before. It's the um, basically the breakdown on how it works. Um, so then, yeah, we can see... We've got a element defined logically, and in the middle we've got a color breakdown. So a single channel definition in Vixen can either be a, a, a standard monochrome channel or it can be an RGB. It's still like one channel as such <laughs> in Vixen, and then it's your definitions which can then split it out to three separate RGB DMX channels. So that's just a single one, and for a, a color RGB, we, we can see the individual uh, DMX breakdown. So that's an older screen capture. So what have we got there? We've got a color dimming curve added in so we can override the uh, color intensity and curves. It's probably a way to do that in X lights too. So you can balance it out if you've got a, an item that's too bright, you can actually change your definitions and uh, turn it back. There's a handy button down the bottom to locate your channel in the actual DMX on the other side once you put your mapping, same in reverse. Um, Right-clicking on the controllers on the right-hand side will get your actual IP config. Um, similar sort of thing where you define your, your actual universes. Uh, we, can do, we can duplicate the channels to create grouping. So a lot of your chase effects in Vixen work on channel groups. So if you want to do like a spinner for a star, you can define each of your pixels for each rung or ring on the star. So you can do like a chase effect to do an exploding or a spinner uh, and whatnot. So yeah, I duplicate it so I can do effects via rung um, or yeah, spinning. Then display setup, we can do multiple previews. Uh, that's my house layout. Again, it's two-dimensional only, although there is a Z coordinate, but it's always zero. So <laughs> I guess that's future expansion. Placeholder. Yeah, placeholder. Um, so, yeah, all the elements are drawn in. When you draw it on the preview, it adds the XY coordinates, so when you go do the display setup, it'll add that geometry in, which is very important for getting your wiping style color effects to work properly. So if you don't do that, it's not going to have the location data and nothing's going to seem to work right. Uh, we can do additional previews, so I used to take a photo of um, custom elements and trace them out uh, that way and then copy them across. Location property, like I said before, um, then we get to the sequence editor. So it's basically similar to X lights. We've got your time um, along the top, and down the side you've got your channel groups. And I say groups because it's not your individual channel 
like it used to be in the old days. Um, it's also a hierarchy-based system. So if you apply an effect to this level, it's going to apply to everything below it. So I like that. So if I want to have the house at, uh, I haven't got the idea shown, but basically <laughs> if it's on the all level and it'll light up everything in the display, put it at the house level, it'll make the whole house say red, and then you can put an effect just on the roof and it would, um, it'll multiply it together. Uh, so what are we talking about there? Um, oh, yeah, that's right. The, a lot of the effects when you configure them, you can say how it applies, wherever it's to a single group or to subgroups. That greatly affects how they work, particularly for the chase elements. Uh, colour versus brightness. Um, actually, that's slightly changed. Back in the old days, you could only do bright colours and the way the colour handling worked. Uh, that's a bit different now. Um, essentially, it's defined, it took, it relies on the, I think, the colour um, as a brightness only. Then you use intensity curves to fluctuate that brightness. So if you wanted a dim blue, you actually use blue as a colour and then set the intensity to halfway and then you're going to get a dark blue as a resulting uh, pattern. There's been a lot of changes in the last two years about how that colour handling works. Uh, intensity curves, I think it's probably similar to X lights. 0% uh, is no brightness, 100% is 100% brightness and that's over a time. So you've got fade in versus fade out. Um, and then, yeah, that's a soft fade in, full on at 100% and fade out again. So it takes the edge off a pattern. You can pulsate to music by having a sawtooth sort of pattern. Uh, there's a library of templates you can build. So you can define your uh, pulsating pattern to the beat of the music once and then template that on throughout your whole sequence. And then when you get it on your house and realize it looks terrible, you just modify that template item and it will propagate through your whole display so you're not sitting there trying to adjust every one. Same deal for colours, again, templatable, so if you need to change down the track, very easy to do. Um, what are we, yeah, that's when we merge the, uh, the intensity versus the colour handling that, um, yeah, dramatically affects it in how, in how it works. Um, Effects, there's lots of them. Um, won't go through a lot of this. Um, alternating effect I find is good for basic animation. Um, again, that's an old screen capture. So, yeah, I use it to animate like Santa's feet or the reindeer feet uh, backwards and forwards. Um, candle flicker, yeah, chase effect, um, all the usual sort of. Uh, options, um, chase effect, yeah, we'll skip for a lot of this. Again, depending on what settings you put in, will dramatically change how it works. Uh, so you can actually, yeah, layer effects like I uh, touched on before. So you've got the colours at the top level at the RGB layer that's going to propagate everything red below. And then when we want to have this chase pattern highlight on the gutter and roof line, that will animate over the top of it over time. So then that's what it looks like on the whole display. So house is red with the white bit. That's a part of a uh, chase so that's animated. Um, you can stack multiple effects on a single row and then that will multiply together. So then you've got two colours at once and they're going to go over the top of each other. Usually when two colours in Vixen uh, are on top of each other, they'll multiply together, um, resulting in like an even brighter colour. Um, however, they've since added the layer, new layer handling, which then you can put certain elements on a different uh, layer functionality, if you call it that. So you can change, modify how the colour merging, merging happens, which I find then good if you're trying to animate. So the bells on the front of my house, I can have the colour changing over time as well as the animating of the bells. 
So that will merge together. So it doesn't matter which position the bell's in. This is one effect doing the alternate, and then the colour is changing and pulsating over time. Um, a Vixen scheduler, just use pipe layer. Um, it exports to the pipe layer. Um, again, it's, it's sequential. Um, yeah, I numbered my controllers, so I remember what order they're in. Um, Synchronize, synchronizing to music, I think keeping to the four beats and bar sort of um, concept and varying the intensity based on that tends to get a fairly good result. Um, and again, you want to probably choose your, your music wisely. Uh, yeah, don't do a long song because people never <laughs> stick around online to, to watch it. Um, the beat detection is all built into Vixen these days, not like the old days we had to suck it in manually. I'd probably but it only does beat detection, right? I don't know, but it seems to work okay for me. Yeah, no, it does beat it detection does beat fine. It's got the yeah, beats and bars they seem to have brought in. Yeah, it uses the band. Yeah. yeah. That. But I don't think that they brought in all the others. Beats and bars are sort of brought in. I don't know. The, well, when I was trying to get 64-bit band, which doesn't exist. Yeah. I also break down my song into various verses so, and colour code them, uh, but end users never see that on, from the street, but I just know well, I'm in the green section of the song, which is, yeah, part of the lyrics, just so when you're scrolling backwards and forwards, you know where you are. Some you can probably do in X-Lights or whatever. Yeah. You just had a timing track for the text. Oh, yeah. Track. Yeah, yeah I, used, I was actually using the launcher uh, um, just the code. Oh. Yeah, I got to. I used the launcher to write text. Yeah. Which is completely not what it was designed for. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I find, yeah, templating is probably the big thing to keep it consistent. And then you can get one section, chorus done, copy and paste it. Usually, the choruses should fairly line up, but you'll just need to realign it. It'll never be 100%. It doesn't matter what sequence you're using, because the songs are never 100% to the millisecond. Yeah. But at yeah. the end of the day, you're still pumping it out at 20 frames or 40 frames a second. Yeah. And those that are watching it aren't that picky. <laughs> no. <laughs> we are. We are. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's my cheat for when you go between choruses and songs I just fade to white. So if you can't work out how to blend it in sometimes, just ramp it all up or, or all down. <laughs> <laughs> the crimes that way. Um, so yeah, improving performance is a big one in Vixen. Uh, if you turn your controllers off, that speeds things up considerably. When you've got all your output enabled, it um, yeah grinds it to a halt. Uh, and yeah, probably build a test rig so you can have it sitting in at your computer. Because I think what we talked about last night, what's on screen looks good on screen, but just doesn't translate, particularly for the low colours or the dim colours, which you can barely see on your monitor. Um, when you've got a LED strip above your computer at home, definitely helps it out, I think. Some at the end. So, anyone going to convert? <laughs>